This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. We've seen how we can make use of the AND operator inside an IF statement to reduce the number of nested IFs required. Now logically, you might follow that sometimes you actually don't want to check that all values meet a criteria, but just one of them might. And in order to do that, we can make use of the OR operator. Taking the IF underscore to file and the sheet entitled OR, we have a list of people's names and some fruit. And what we're trying to check here is whether at least one of these values exceeds that minimum there, which at the moment is five. If any one of these exceeds that minimum, then we've got an okay situation. If none of them exceed five, then we've obviously not got an okay situation. We failed to meet our minimum. So the syntax is pretty much the same as the and. It's equals if, open brackets, to start the if statement. Our logical test is now going to be replaced with an or operator. That's or. Now the syntax for the or is exactly the same as the and. It's or, open brackets, and then each of the set criteria you're checking. The difference being that only one of them needs to evaluate to true for this to be a positive outcome. If it's or, that cell there is a greater than that, comma. This time for the comma, you can read or. So it's either this is greater than that, or that is greater than that, or, in our case, a comma, that is greater than that, another comma for or, that is greater than that. That's our four criteria we are checking. So we would close the brackets for the or statement. So unlike the and, this OR is checking for cell values, but if any one of them evaluates true, then we fall into the true part of this logical test, in which case we get an OK. Else, we get a fail. Close brackets on the IF. So the AND and the OR, in this case the OR, evaluates multiple expressions, in this case four. With the OR, if any one of those is true, then the result of this OR is true, and we end up in this part of the IF. If none of them prove to be true, then that's a fail, and we end up in this part of the if. So just before we proceed, let's make those absolute again. So that's J1 becomes $J1. That then allows us to copy that formula. So even Mary, although she's got three zeros, the number of apples exceeds the five, so we get an OK. Mungo, only one of them again exceeds the five, but we still get the OK. Whereas for John and Guy, where none of them exceed the five, we're in a fail situation. So this is making use of the or. The reason for it is the same as the and, is to reduce the amount of nested ifs you require, and it keeps the formula a lot shorter. The or allows you to check multiple statements, and if any one of them evaluates the true, then we're into the true part of the if. With the and, every one of them must evaluate the true to fall into the true part of the if. So that's making use of or within your if statements to cut down really the length of the formula, effectively, 